G'day, how are you going? God bless you. Today I'd like to do a review of a chart I did about a year and a half ago, uh, July 2015, this version was completed. And in this chart we are looking at a correlation between the mapping of Daniel's 70th week and the life of the Antichrist. It is believed that Prince Harry is the Antichrist or the false messiah. Uh, he has over a hundred calculations of his name that equal or reference the number 666 using nine different forms of Dramatra. So it is without any shadow of a doubt that he is the first beast in Revelation chapter 13. So essentially what we've got with this chart <clears throat> is a starting point for Daniel's 70th week. And we know this is a starting point for Daniel's 70th week because in Revelation chapter 12 it talks about there being 1260 days. And in Daniel uh, chapter 12 it talks about there being 1290 days so from this feast Yom Teruah 2017 until this feast over here Yom Kippur 2024 there is exactly 2550 days which is 1260 plus 1290 days so we know that this is significant Feast days um, are known as appointed times. The Hebrew word moed, which is used in Leviticus chapter 23 for feast, right? So the English word is feast, the Hebrew word is moed. Um, well, I should say that the, the English word feast is used for moed. My apologies. So that those feast days are appointed times. Jesus died um, at Passover uh, and then three days later after uh, unleavened bread, which is a feast that comes after Passover, and then first fruits, and then Jesus was resurrected. So those three feasts, which are the uh, spring feasts in the nor Northern Hemisphere, they are an they were an appointed time. Jesus died at an appointed time. It says in the book of Revelation that Jesus was the lamb slain at the foundation of the world. So this means that um, when he died, it was an appointed time. It was a time marked by a feast. Those feasts are known in Hebrew as moed, and that means appointed time. So... Uh, we also have the Feast of Pentecost or the Feast of Weeks or Shavuot in Hebrew. Uh, that is also an appointed time. So Jesus rose from the dead. Forty days later, after he'd been seen by many people, he was received up into heaven, into the clouds. And then ten days later was the Feast of Weeks or Pentecost. Pent means five. Uh, and uh, the Feast of Weeks is seven weeks, so 49 days, and then on the 50th day uh, is the celebration for, Fenti for Pentecost. So Pentecost is also an appointed time. So the Holy Spirit was poured out on the believers, and that is when the church began on Pentecost. Interestingly, uh, modern Israel also began on Pentecost. Pentecost 1948. Uh, at midnight on the 14th of May, the uh, mandate for Palestine ended. And then the next day was the 15th. And the evening of the 15th until the 16th, or the evening of the 16th, is Pentecost. So the first full biblical day that Israel experienced as a modern nation, as a born-again nation, was Pentecost 1948. So, moed is a very important Hebrew word, and uh, it's also it's first mentioned in Genesis chapter one verse fourteen, uh, when it talks about the creation of the stars, 
um, which includes wandering stars. Planets are known as wandering stars. Uh, the moon and the sun. It says that these are for signs and for seasons. The English word seasons is the Hebrew word moed, and it means appointed times. So on this feast here, Yom Teruah, we have a starting point for Daniel's 70th week. And then we have 12, 1260 plus 1290 days later, or 2550 days later, we have the end of Daniel's 70th week on Yom Kippur 2024. And the significant... Now, this regularly occurs except for intercalary months. Uh, the the uh, um, Hebrew calendar is a lunar calendar, um, but it keeps in time with the solar, solar years or the seasons. So every now and again, they have to add um, a month to uh, keep up with the solar calendar, or with, well, to keep up, keep in time with the seasons, actually. Um, so because it's keeping in time with the seasons, it then keeps in time with the solar calendar. So it's a lunar solar calendar, uh, whereas the Gregorian calendar is strictly a solar calendar. So I just thought of a number of things more I could say, but I'm starting to get off topic. So I'll just come back to the chart. Um, so Yom Teruah 2017, um, oh, that, that's the other thing I was going to say, actually, was um, we have these intercalary months, and this, this time period regularly occurs except for intercalary months. So we know that this, um, this particular Yom Teruah is significant uh, because of the Revelation 12 heavenly sign that occurs the day after. Um, now, interestingly enough, I was just reading yesterday in, in Revelation 12, it says that, that the um, dragon's tail wipes out a third of the stars of heaven, which could literally be all the stars in the universe, a third of all the stars. Um, or it could be just a meteor meteorite shower, um, and it, it may look like in the night sky, for those people viewing it at that time, it may look like a third of the stars are falling. It's not entirely sure what, what, how they will play out, but it does say that the dragon's tail wipes out a third of the stars. Then it says that the dragon is crouched ready to receive the baby that is being born, which uh, that baby is represented by the planet Jupiter that has just spent uh, 294 days or 44 weeks um, in a gestational period within the constellation's womb, the constellation Virgo. Now, if you're listening and you're thinking, what are you talking about? Um, I've got some videos that explain it in more detail. And um, um, most people by now who are Christians would know about the, the uh, Revelation 12 sign that's occurring on the 23rd of September. The point is, the point is this, that the stars fall then the dragon is ready to receive the baby. Then the baby's um, born, Jupiter, and, is, and, the, and it says that Jupiter is caught up to heaven, or it says that the baby is caught up to heaven, the man-child. So that means that the stars fall before, the, um, before Jupiter is birthed from the constellation. So, so this means that... Um, See, the, the moon comes under the feet of the constellation at 6.10 p.m. Jerusalem time. Right? Jerusalem time, 6.10 or 18.10, 24 hour time, 6.10 p.m. time. That is, when, uh, uh, that is when the moon comes under the feet of the constellation. So the, pit, the picture given in Revelation 12 verses 1 and 2 is that the moon has to be under the feet of the constellation. So that's when we know that the, that the, um, the planet is, is, is birthed. All right. Now, I explained in another video um, about the Revelation 12 sign that um, the two weeks after it leaves the quadrangle, which is technically the, the womb, there's two weeks between that point and when the moon is under the feet of the constellation. And I believe that you know because of the restrictions of trying to show a space um, birth, I believe that that two weeks is a representation of the time between um, when 
the menstrual cycle begins and when ovulation takes place. Normally, that space of time is two weeks. So I believe that it, it is shown at the end um, rather than at the beginning because I can't conceive of a way that you would show that at the beginning. But it is there. There is a two-week period where Jupiter has left the, left the womb and before the moon is under the feet of the constellation. So I believe that that two weeks is, is the time between when the menstrual cycle begins and when ovulation takes place, which conception cannot take place until ovulation has taken place. So, so I believe that explains that part of it. But um, the 23rd is when the moon is under the feet of the constellation in Jerusalem at 6.10. So Yom Teruah, which happens on the evening of the 21st until the evening of the 22nd, that is when I believe we'll see the stars fall. And that is when, you know, I believe that, uh, you know, when, when um, the sun sets on the evening of the 21st and the crescent moon is seen, which in TorahCalendar.com, that's, it's clearly obvious that the, the moon can be seen at that time, right? It's, um, I've seen some other people do videos and they're saying that Yom Teruah is going to happen on the 23rd. Um, that that's not possible because the sign happens before sunset, right? So it's totally ridiculous to say that Yom Teruah happens on the 23rd. That's just not possible. Yom Teruah happens on the evening of the 21st to the to the evening of the well is that day. And it begins from the evening of the 21st to the evening of the 22nd because a, a biblical day is from evening to evening. So Torah calendar, um, it has a technical graph that shows that very clearly. So, um, so I expect there'll be some sort of um, confirmation regards to the stars where um, what the scripture says, you know, the, the dragon's tail wipes out a third of the stars. So that's why this um, feast is significant, why, we, why I think this count should be uh, made at this time. Um, another reason is that from Pentecost 1948 until 2017, well, in fact, if you wanted to go to Pentecost to Pentecost, so Pentecost 2017 is 70 biblical years and 19 days. So a biblical year is 360 days in a year. That's the way it was before the flood. And um, I've got a video that I'll leave a link to below that talks about that because it, you know, I don't want to use up time now talking about it. Um, so that that's in my video God's Great Week where I where I talk about that because um, I cover the flood and and all sorts all those sorts of things. So there's two reasons. Um, the Bible talks about how we should have two witnesses um, to form a, a doctrinal. Thing. You know, it says, "Let everything be established in the mouth. Let everything be established in the mouth of two or three witnesses." So, I believe that um, the Revelation 12 sign is one witness to this being a significant Yom Teruah, and I believe the 70 biblical years, which is a generation, which Moses talks about in Psalm 90. Uh, I think it's Psalm. 90 verse 10 where it talks about um, the, the days of our life being 70 years and if by reason of strength 80 years so the beginning of Daniel's 70th week is 70 biblical years and then we have seven years so 70 to 77 years which falls into the generation specified by Moses in Psalm 90 70 to 80 years falls within that bracket and remember, it says, and if by reason of strength, then 80 years. So if you Google the average lifespan of a human being, it's about 70 years. So uh, that's very interesting. So teruah is the Hebrew word for alarm. If you look, if you look up Strong's Concordance, uh, the Hebrew word teruah means alarm. Okay. So we have this starting point for Daniel's 70th week, and I think I've convinced you from what I've said 
that uh, I mean it this is speculation you know what we're doing but we know we believe that Jesus is coming back soon he's coming back for the church and then there's going to be the wrath phase of Daniel's 70th week which is the second half of the second half of Daniel's 70th week and then at the end of Daniel's 70th week that's when the second coming occurs so the rapture we meet him in the clouds he's not actually coming back to earth and then in um at on the day of the Lord, which is when Armageddon takes place, uh, that is when Jesus plants his feet on the Mount of Olives and the Mount of Olives, um, there's an earthquake and it separates. Um, the earth, the, um, there's a cleavage between, from east to west and it separates north to south. So there's a, fo- uh, uh, you know, there'll be, whether there's an existing fault line or not, I don't know, but um that is that that's going to open up the land is going to open up along the east west um line. there's going to be an east west line a fault line that's going to open up and the man of olives is going to go move forward one half is going to move forward to the north and one half is going to move to the south uh, jesus is going to land on the man of olives and then he's going to go and get the antichrist and throw him into the lake of fire along with the second beast or the false prophet um, which is the Pope, and cast them alive into the lake of fire. So, um, so that happens at the end of Daniel's seventieth week. So, that's Daniel's seventieth week, and the reasoning behind why I'm saying those things. All right. Now, uh, so what we have on that day is that Prince Harry will be thirty-three years old, plus one week. He'll be exactly. 33 years old plus one week. Now, Jesus, I believe, died at the age of 33, um, 33 and a half, I believe, because uh, he began his ministry at 30. We know that much. That's specific. We have documentation about that. And Jesus hints um, about the length of his ministry just after it begins. He refers to how Elijah, uh, how it didn't rain for three and a half years. Now, in the Old Testament, it just says three years. Jesus is more specific. I don't know how he knows this. I assume it's through the Holy Spirit. He says three and a half years that it didn't rain. So um, this is just after de- after Jesus begins his ministry. So I think that's fairly significant. So if we add three and a half years to 30 years, it's 33 and a half years. Um, and it's also believed that he was born um, at around Yom Teruah, the Feast of Trumpets, that, you know, that's when he was born. So, and then he died, you know, so that's the, the autumn feast, and then he died in the spring feast. So that's a six-month period that's generated. Um, so, I mean, if you read the book of the Gospel of John, John says that if he was to write down everything that Jesus did, it, not all the books in the world would be able to contain all the things he was writing about. So I, I don't think it's right to say that it's 70 weeks. Um, Michael Rood, who's done a chronological gospel, believes it's 70 weeks. And I know some other people, I think Jason Kelty, believes that um, it's 70 weeks. I don't believe that. I believe it's three and a half years. Um, I've done a chronological gospel as well. And basically with Michael Rood, he has to remove a scripture and add a scripture, right? Uh, which the Bible says you're not meant to do in Revelation, uh, specifically about the book of Revelation, though, I suppose. But um, I think it infers the whole book of the Bible that you're not meant to add or take from it. And that's exactly what Michael Rood does. So I I don't agree at all with uh, that teaching that it's 70 weeks. I believe it's three and a half years. So Prince Harry is 33 years old, plus one week. And I believe that plus one week is an echo of what it's referring to, which is Daniel's 70th week, what it, what it begins. that it, It's uh, like a little hint. So we've got, um, we've got Prince Harry here, 33 years old plus one week, and that, that is exactly on Yom Teruah 2017. And then at the end of Daniel's 70th week, uh, we have Prince Harry at the age of 40, less one day. So on Yom Kippur 2024, and Yom Kippur is the sixth feast in the seven feasts in Leviticus chapter 23, he'll be uh, 40 years less one day. 
So the significance of that is that 40 is a time of testing and probation in the Bible. Um, it, when Noah's flood took place or when the global flood took place, uh, it rained for 40 days and 40 nights. Jesus, when he was um, led, led and driven by the Holy Spirit into the wilderness and he was tempted by, the, by Satan, um, it was for 40 days and 40 nights. Moses, when he fasted, Elijah, when he fasted, it was for 40 days and 40 nights. And Jesus, of course, when he was in the wilderness, was fasting for that time, to, time period as well. So, and the children of Israel were in the, wandering around in the desert for 40, 40 years. Um, we've got Moses. Uh, his life can be separated into three 40s. Uh, you've got the first 40 years where he was in the courts of Pharaoh. And then the next 40 years where he, he'd, um, he'd, he'd murdered um, an Egyptian slave master. Um, and then he ran away, and for 40 years he was in the desert. Um, you know, he, he was a somebody, then he became a nobody, and then God uses a nobody to, be, to become a somebody. Um, and so the last 40 years of his life he was wandering around the desert as well, uh, leading the children of Israel, preserving the things that God had instructed him about um, at the beginning of that 40 years after the exodus through the Red Sea. So 40 is a time, a period of time, testing and probation and Prince Harry um, miss, you know, fails that test by one day. God is gracious and patient with him. Um, you know, the Bible says God is willing that none should perish. So if you'll notice here with the photos, um, just getting sidetracked for a moment, I've used some um, aging, um, I've taken this photo and gone to an online program and done some aging of this face. Um, so that's why this face is meant to look like Harry as he would at 40 years. But he has since grown a beard, so maybe a little bit irrelevant now. But um, So 40 is a time of, of testing in the Bible. And God is gracious and patient with Prince Harry, hoping that he'll turn to Christ. But Harry, you know, he believes he's the master of his fate and that he's the captain of his soul. Uh, the Invictus Games, which um, you know, if you've seen the movie with Morgan Freeman in, um, about uh, uh, Nelson Mandela, and um, you know that's called Invictus. And so there's a poem by Ernest Henley, and in that poem, at the last line of the poem, it says, "I am the master of my fate. I am the captain of my soul." And I can tell you, as a Christian, um, I am not the master of my fate. I am not the captain of my soul. Jesus is the master of my fate. Jesus is the captain of my soul. So Prince Harry gets a, gets around with a um, silicon wristband that says, I am the master of my fate. And that's where he's uh, deluding. Uh, that's where he is drawing aside people. Um, he's misleading them. He's becoming a false messiah. Uh, he's, he's, he's becoming an antichrist and deceiving people and thinking that, that they are in control of their lives. God is in control of your life if you submit to him. So then um, if, we, if we take those 1260 days from this point um, to this point and the 1290 days back from, two, from Yom Kippur 2024 to this point, we land on the 5th of March, 2024. Now, on that day, Prince Harry will be 36 years old, which is 6 times 6, and 171 days, which is approximately 6 months. So we have a signature 6 um, there with um, that, 666. 36 is 6 times 6 plus 6 months. So we have that as a something significant or something to alert us to something. So I looked a little bit further, and he'll be exactly um, 13,320 days old, which can be exp expressed as the following. 6 times 6 times 6 times 60 days, all right, so 3 sixes times 60 days, plus 6 times 60 days uh, equals 13,320 days. So we've got uh, 6 sixes. Uh, four single sixes and two sixties. 
And um, in relation to the hundred, over 100 names that we've got calculating him as the Antichrist, that reference or equal, you know, 100 of his names, combinations of his names, equal or reference the number 666. So um, he, just everything about him is the number six, basically. Uh, so it's very significant that on the day of the, um, the day of the abomination of desolation, right, which is 1260 days after Yom Teruah 2017 and 1290 days before Yom Kippur 2024, that is the day of the, the day of the um, abomination of desolation. And on that day, he will be 13,320 days old, which, as I said, is 6 times 6 times 6 times 60 plus 6 times 60 days. Um, so, so, you know, what's going to happen? I mean, we've got the Revelation 12 sign occurring on the 23rd. The, that's when the moon will be under the feet of the constellation. That's when the planet is technically birthed. What is going to happen between now and that day? Because that's the beginning of Daniel's 70th week. That's when, um, you see, Revelation, the book of Revelation has two parts. Chapters 1 to 11 is one chronological stream, and chapters 12 to 22 is another chronological stream. It can be split down the middle. Uh, once again, talking about witnesses, two witnesses. God always does establishes things with two witnesses. And so it is with the book of Revelation. It can be split down the middle, and there's two chronological streams. So chapters 6 to 11 is specifically Daniel's 70th week, one chronological stream. And chapters 12 to 19 is another chronological stream talking about Daniel's 70th week. And then we see matches between chapter 6 and chapter 12, chapter 7 and chapter 14, chapter uh, 8 and 9, I think it is, and chapter 16. So 8 and 9 is talking about the trumpets, and chapter 16 is talking about the vials, so there's a match there. Chapter 7 and chapter 14 are talking about the rapture, and there's both evidence for that. And chapter 6 and chapter 12 are talking about the beginning of Daniel's 70th week. Um, and then chapter 11 and chapter 19 is also talking about uh, there's a, a match because uh, I think it's Revelation chapter 10 verse 7 says that um, when, when, the, when the seventh angel sounds his trumpet, the mystery of God shall be finished. And then it says in Revelation 11 verse 15, it says um, that all the kingdoms have become the kingdoms of our Lord, indicating that that's the end, right? Revelation 11 verse 15, the seventh angel sounds. So Revelation 11 is clearly the end of a time stream. And um, um, in, in Revelation chapter 16, it talks about one of the bowls or, or vials being poured out onto the beast kingdom. How can the beast kingdom still be in existence if five chapters earlier it said all the kingdoms have become our lords? Right? That's an anachronism. It doesn't make sense. The only way it makes sense is if you do what I say. Uh, you split the uh, chronology of the book of Revelation in half, chapters 1 to 11, chapters 22 to tw uh, 12 to 22. Um, and then, you know, the matches, as I said, 6 to 11 and 12 to 19. So 6 to 11 is one chrono chronological stream. 12 to 19 is another chronological stream. So, uh, so Revelation chapter 6 matches Revelation chapter 12. So when the, six, uh, when the first seal is opened in chapter 6, verses 1 and 2, that is matching Revelation 12, 1 and 2. That's, that's happening at the same time. So what, what world event, what world event is going to occur that would, uh, you know, that a man would be given a crown and he would be given, he would go forth conquering and to conquer? So I've got, you know, on the chart here, you can see it here, um, Revelation chapter 6, verses 1 and 2. And it matches Daniel chapter seven, chapter nine, verse twenty-seven, where it says that he shall confirm the, the Antichrist, Prince Harry, 
um, the prince, the prince that shall come, shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. Um, so he already has, you know, the United Nations already have an existing covenant with this man, all right? And it's most likely Prince Charles was formerly the man they had for such an emergency. Um, but they, the technology just wasn't there to be able to put an RFID or an NFC device into, you, to, into your right hand. Um, so um, now uh, Harry's legal name is Henry Charles Albert David. So Charles is one of his names and he is also a Prince of Wales. So whatever you apply to Charles, like um, Prince Charles of Wales equals 666 using uh, standard English Dramatra that is uh, binary. So the last four letters have a value of zero because um, Hebrew only has 22 letters. So Tim Cohen, who I believe invented this this system, he just assigned zero values to the last four letters. Using that system, and Wales has a, has a W in it, which has a value of zero. So it does have an impact. That equals 666. And Prince... Uh, sorry... Uh, Prince Charles Wales in Hebrew Dramatra, standard Hebrew Dramatra equals 666. And I should just qualify, when I say standard English Dramatra, uh, it's not actually standard, is it? it but it, it is English. It's, see, we have ordinal Dramatra, which is um, each letter in the alphabet has, is, it is represented by its position in the alphabet. So A has a value of 1, Z has a value of 22, uh, 26. So... Um, Standard English Dramatra, that system is a little bit different from ordinal English Dramatra. With standard English Dramatra, A has a value of 1, and then uh, I think when you get to J, it has a value of 10, and K has a value of um, 20, and it's like the Hebrew numbering system. And then when you get to um, the last letter, Z, it has a value of 800, I think it is. Um, so... So it, it, it basically means that you can combine any letter to produce any number um, and you're only confined by your, la, your, your highest letter. So with the Hebrew numbering system, Tav has a value of 400. So the biggest number that they can produce using those letters is 499. But anyway, um, I've got off track. Um, so Prince Harry has... Um, I was talking about Prince Charles and speculating. I believe that the United Nations have an existing covenant with Prince Harry and he will confirm that covenant on Yom Teruah, the Day of Alarm, on the 21st of September. So in Jerusalem, the sun goes down and before the third star twinkles and night has fallen, the moon must be sighted, the crescent moon. And at the time that the sun sets, that will be 11.37 New York time. And I believe Prince Harry will be at the United Nations on the, on the 21st of September, 11.37 a.m. Now, you might be saying, oh, that's not technically, you know, it's, that's not, but, but, you know, we go by what happens from the Temple Mount. Um, the Temple Mount is where the sighting of the new moon normally takes place. And that's where Torah calendar um, sets up its you know, elevation, its, its um, geo coordinates from that point. And we know that the sighting of the new moon is accurate to those, to those calculations. Um, so when sun, the sun sets, the new moon is seen, seen that'll be 6.37 p.m. Jerusalem time. But in New York, it'll be 11.37 a.m. And that's when I believe Prince Harry will be at the United Nations. Why will he be at the United Nations? What, what event has taken place that would cause him to be there? Now, the United Nations have in their preamble, um, they say to introduce international machinery for the purposes of you know, economic benefit for, for the world, basically. I'll, I'll leave a link below f to the United Nations preamble about that. So they have in their constitution a clause which gives them the reason to do things in, in, in the supposed benefit of people. So I believe that he'll be given a crown, he'll be given a bow, and his arrows 
will be the RFID chip. And he'll go forth conquering and to conquer. And he has got the perfect platform for that. He's got um, the Invictus Games happening on the Saturday, the 23rd of September. And so he's got a perfect place after being at, you know, that's it in Canada, in Toronto. He's got a perfect place after being at the United Nations to retreat to and have all this love and support about what he's doing, trying to stop war. You know, it's all about not having to go to war anymore. You know, we'll have this personal security device. And um, so what is it that's going to cause that to happen? I mean, people are believing in this Revelation 12 sign. They believe it's it's something significant. What is it that's going to happen? Well, the most hotly contested piece of real estate in the world is the Dome of the Rock. Uh, or the Temple Mount on which the Dome of the Rock sits. And um, now September 11, you know, World Trade Center number seven, for that to collapse, you know, that just is very suspicious. Um, You know, the owner of the buildings was a Jew, Silverman or whatever his name is. There's there's enough, you know, like for the architects and engineers um, for 9-11, you know, for for a group of people, a group of professionals, to band together and say something suspicious happened on that day. Now, I think what happened was the the terrorists had planned to do what they were going to do, and the United States government knew it was going to happen, and they let it happen, right? Because they knew that it would have a benefit to the country. They would be able to tighten security. They would have reason to do whatever they liked in terms of security. The same sort of thing is going to happen in Israel. Israel has, uh, in 2009, introduced uh, biometric database laws, which have to be ratified by June 30 this year. Now, um, to begin with, the the people uh, volunteered the information. So they would provide various shots of their face to provide contouring maps of their face for facial recognition, fingerprints, I mean, where does it stop? I mean, probably, I mean, it's for immediate identification, but I suppose blood, blood would also, could also be um, given as well. So uh, they have to ratify those laws by June 30 this year. And once those laws are ratified, if there was to be some sort of traumatic event occur in Israel, and they wanted to tighten their security, they would be well within their rights to do so. And they could easily start introducing a chip device. Um, well, see, no, the, the, um, Charlie, uh, this guy called on BuzzFeed, um, he, do, he did, did the first YouTube video documented buying something with a chip in his hand. Uh, Charlie was Zal, I think his name is, or something like that. There's a YouTube video about it by BuzzFeed. So it, the technology is there. Um, the apps are all set up. Um, you know, someone in the shop uses a phone to scan um, the near field communication device or the RFID, which is radio frequency identification. They scan his hand and he pays for something with his hand. So the technology is there and... Um, It's just a matter of the laws. The laws have to be ratified. Either they're going to scrap it or keep it. I believe they'll keep it. And then 660 days after the the last blood moon in 2015 lands us on the 24th of July, 2017. So 24 days after the deadline for the laws to be ratified. On that day, I believe that terrorists will carry out and attack on the Dome of the Rock and destroy it. Because the Muslims believe that the world has to be in chaos for their Messiah to come. All right? So that's why ISIS is doing what they're doing. They, they believe. right Now, what you believe determines what you think, and what you think determines what you say and do. So you have to get what you believe right. If you want, if you want to produce good character, if you want to produce good actions, you have to get what you believe right. So they believe the world has to be in chaos and their actions follow that belief accordingly. So I believe like the same, same thing that happened with 9-11, you know, that's like a curtain um, raiser. 
uh, someone in on my in my comments on my YouTube um, expressed it like that that 9/11 is just a curtain raiser. Now I had thought, I had thought um, mistakenly that it would be the 26th of August, which is 333 days after the last blood moon in 2015. Now the blood moons have to mean something. You know, we've got 333 days between Pentecost 1948 and the first blood moon in 1949. And a lot of people said, oh, there's not enough correlation there for it to mean anything. Therefore, all those things about the blood moon tetrads were irrelevant. Some people argued like Tim McHyde. Um, I believe the blood moon tetrads were significant. For those tetrads to land on feast days... now. Some of them landed on Hebkel feast days and some of them landed on Torah calendar feast days. So the Hebkel sightings of the moon were based on, and that affects when the feast days happen, uh, was based on a tabled sighting, so um, a dark moon sighting of the moon, if you like, because with a tabled sighting, you can guess when the moon is at its darkest point rather than the crescent moon sighting, if you want, you know, because the moon, the moon is... Um, is in darkness and then the crescent moon occurs and that's the only way you can really tell that the moon has begun is with a crescent moon sighting so Hebkel sightings are not accurate but there was a mixture of where the um, blood moon tetrads landed I think to create an interest for both calendars um, so I think the blood moon tetrads are relevant I had thought 333 days after the last blood moon, and that was to um, match or mirror the 333 days at the beginning, the first blood moon tetrad. Um, but obviously that didn't pan out. Um, had other reasons for believing that as well, which I won't go into here. But 333, um, you know, three is the number of God, uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Um, in when Jesus was um, baptized, he comes up out of the water and the Father speaks and there's the Holy Spirit represented by a dove and there's the Son of God who is God. So we have three persons in the Godhead, all three represented in that verse. Three is the number that three is a, 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 a the number of divinity. The no, is a you know seven is um, a number that represents spiritual perfection, whereas three represents um, the divinity of God. So um, I, th I think that three is significant and, um, you know, I've learnt more as time has gone past, as time has gone by. So I believe 660 days, uh, 666 days after the last blood moon in 2015, which is the 24th of July 2017, will be when um, the Dome of the Rock will be destroyed by terrorists. Um, now... They have control. They have access to that area. Um, they've got. They've been stockpiling firecrackers and all sorts of things because they're you know low grade. I know they can't destroy a building, but they're low grade explosives. Now, what if they're just slipping in a little bit of C4 or a little bit of this, a little bit of that? You know, some sort of explosive that could knock out the columns in the Dome of the Rock. Once that building goes down. Um, the Israelis are surely going to see that as an indication that they can build their third temple. So this this you know this is 60 days before Yom Teruah 2017. So um, you know, uh, I mean, even that in itself is interesting. We've got 666 days between the last blood moon and this event that I'm proposing will happen, and then 60 days, another six. Um, when Prince Harry will be at the United Nations and he will be, uh, you know, he, he'll be given a crown to go forth conquering and to conquer. And the crown will be a worldwide acknowledgement that he has the right to do that. He has, he's been given a crown and he will be marketing the RFID. And um, since he is going to be at the Invictus Games a couple of days later, um, you know, because that happened, you know, he'll be at the United Nations on the 21st, and then um, he'll be at Toronto on the 23rd. Um, now, just 
this uh, no, I won't go into that right now. But um, he, so he'll be he'll be at the um, Invictus Games on the twenty third. So I suspect he may get an RFID chip implanted in the weeks prior. So he's got 60 days to go and get the chip implanted because when he's shaking hands, he doesn't want, you know, when you shake hand, shake hands, the thumb is going to go right where that wound will be. So infection wise, he doesn't want, he wants to, he wants to cuddle people and shake their hands and win them over and all that sort of thing. Um, he doesn't want to be doing that with a, a open wound. So I think he'll get the RFID chip in the 60 days leading up to Yom Teruah 2017. And, um, and then it'll be game on. The tribulation will begin. And that lasts 1,335 days. Revelation, uh, Daniel chapter 12, verse 11. Uh, sorry, um, I spoke earlier about Daniel 12, verse 12, being 1,290 days. I think I got that wrong. 12 verse 11 is 1290 days 12 verse 12 is 1335 days so i correct myself there so from yom teruah 2017 to pentecost 2021 is 1335 days according to torahcalendar.com so the church was birthed on pentecost and the holy spirit was poured out and Joel talks about in the last days that his Holy Spirit is the Holy Spirit is going to be poured out again. It makes sense that on the day before the rapture, sorry, the day of the rapture, that the Holy Spirit would be poured out. And you know, in, ter- in terms of timing the event worldwide, it could very well be a day before that the Holy Spirit. I mean, it could be a climactic thing that the Holy Spirit is being poured out. Um, so. The tribulation will last 1,335 days. All right, well, I've covered everything that I really wanted to cover in this chart. This chart um, is available. um, I'll provide a link below in the description box, which will be a link to a Facebook post. And then at the Facebook post, if you really want to, you can download a PDF of this chart. So... um, so just, I just noticed on this part of the chart, I'll just mention this. So Harry Mountbatten-Windsor. Um, Mountbatten-Windsor has been the legal name of the Royals since um, 1960 or 1963 or something like that. If you put that name into Google Translate, um, you get back these letters here in Hebrew, which if you put into, if you go to the Number Man website, uh, there's a Hebrew Dramatra calculator there. You have to be careful which calculator you use. Um, you want to be able to exchange Hebrew letters for the actual Dramatra values that you would, um, uh, you know, like where, uh, like Dramatrix.org, they don't have, they they do have this calculator, but it's it's hidden and it's, um, you can, if you do a little bit, bit of digging, you can find it, but the one that they have as their main page, um, it's not the calculator that you need. So Harry Mountbatten Windsor equals 666, and that's his paternal surname. Then Harry Spencer is his maternal surname. That equals 666. And then Prince Henry Albert David equals 666. Harry equals 6 times 6 times 6. It equals 216, which has those factors. And the only name that's not included is Prince Charles Wales, because his legal name, as I said, is Henry Charles Albert David. So Prince Charles Wales equals 666, and that's not on this chart, which I might... I might actually update the chart to include that because um, I've got a friend on on Facebook who I met through YouTube. Uh, his name's Jokum, and he's done an excellent job in finding many of these calculations in Greek. And uh, he's got an associate that um, a student, a Greek student, that's helped him, and he's done a fan- fantastic job in in digging up most of the names um, that we've now got. Um, and I'd also like to thank Steve. You know who you are. And um, there's been a very a few, a few other people that have helped us along the way, like um, a lady, Jamie, I think her name is. Um, so uh, it really does, it is really good when people come alongside you and help you with what you're doing. And, and um, you know, our reward is in heaven, uh, where no, you know, Jesus said, neither rust or moth can destroy. So... Uh, so that's all I wanted to talk about. 
Thank you for listening. It's gone 50 minutes now. Thank you very much for um, sticking with me with all that. A lot of information. That's pretty much a summary of the last three years that I've been dedicated to this subject. Um, And look, I want to give a special credit to um, Scott Clark. I think um, I haven't haven't done this before with the Revelation 12 sign um, to, to explain why I haven't given credit to Scott in my videos about the Revelation 12 sign is I wanted to own it for myself uh, and I wanted to, uh, there was things that I found about that that um, Scott hadn't found. I think there's three things that I can think of uh, but he has certainly helped me in in discovering the things that I did in that regard and the reason that I didn't give credit to Scott straight away is because, um, well like I said, I wanted to own it for myself but um, Jane, uh, Tapley, uh, William Tapley. Um, now I don't, I don't watch his videos, but um, we have had a little bit of communication about the Revelation 12 sign, and he put out a video before Scott. But Scott explains that um, the reason for that was because he was online talking about it, and then it just it sort of spiraled and went ballistic, you know, viral. Uh, the information went viral, so it went out to a lot of people. He believes, but with um. With the 2007 Star of Bethlehem movie by, uh, I can't remember if it's Larkin or, because uh, there's the guy who does the, the charts. Uh, anyway, I always get it confused. But he did the Bethlehem, Star of Bethlehem movie in 2007 or 2008. Scott looked into it. And there was obviously other people looking into it for him to have a discussion. So um, we're all in this together. And I noticed that Scott was using Lewis Vega's chart. So I contacted Lewis, and as far as Lewis was concerned, he had discovered it. So I think maybe it might be a number of people that the Lord has set up to um, discover it. Um, but um, Scott is certainly, you know, he's definitely claiming it as something that he, he discovered. Um, now... Lewis did say Scott can have it, he doesn't care, because he checked the the creation dates for the folders for his charts, and they were after Scott had published his video. So, so, you know, I was looking for some hard evidence uh, as to who actually discovered it. I do think it's interesting that Scott talks about um, doing an autopsy on the Revelation 12 sign, because an autopsy is what you do on something that's dead. This isn't dead. This is alive. This is... This is um, I hope this will be a game changer in people's lives because, um, you know, like for me, um, you know, you, you, if you want to contend your faith, you have to have an acknowledgement of creation and you have to have an acknowledgement of prophecy. So it's looking at the past and the future and you just live your day, you live each day as it comes, um, live each day uh, in the strength that God gives you. You don't worry about tomorrow, you just live for each day. Jesus said um, that each day has enough evil. Um, There's a Hebrew word, um, ra, which means adversity or evil. Um, The King James translates it as evil, but there's another meaning of that word, adversity. So when Jesus says there's enough evil for that day, he's talking about adversity. He's talking about people coming uh, coming against you. All right, well... Starting to work up a sweat. It's um, summer here in in uh, Victoria, and um, I've had to downgrade my lighting system a little bit so that there's not as much heat generated. But anyway, thank you very much for listening. God bless you. Um, I've got other videos if you want to check them out, um, which I'll maybe leave some links to at the the end of this video. And um, yeah, that's it. God bless you. Thanks. Bye.